Florida's largest indoor pickleball facility halfway to completion in the villages. Owners unoccupied home in the villages facing $2,500 in fines. Sefter County deputies to collect unwanted medicine Saturday at Walmart. DUI suspect arrested after straying near the helipad at the village's hospital. Young talent shines at Opera Club's 30th anniversary celebration. Villagers oft arrested son snared in a multi-agency initiative. A convicted felon headed back to prison after a ruckus at a square. We remember an event in the villages will pay tribute to the Holocaust survivors. How many holes in ones did we get this week? Letters to the editor. This and more coming up. This week's news is brought to you by my Patreon and YouTube members. Thanks, guys. You're the best. Okay, we got some updates. Let's get them out of the way. A convicted felon is heading back to prison after a ruckus last year at Spanish Springs Town Square. Eric Allen Feliciano, 30, has been sentenced to 32 months in Florida Department of Corrections as a result of a hearing earlier this month in Lake County Court. He will receive credit for 418 days already served in Lake County Jail. He previously served time in prison for burglary and aggravated battery. Like I said before, these people are painting a picture of themselves on their face. Feliciano was arrested February 16, 2023 after Lady Lake police officers were dispatched to investigate a report of a man smoking marijuana and playing loud music on his phone at the square. Feliciano was also reportedly going into stores at the square and screaming at business owners. A member of commercial property management told police that the villagers wanted to press charges against Feliciano. Well, that's an update on him. Back to prison you go. Here's another update. You'll have to go back a few months on this guy. It was a jealous outrage he had. A villager arrested after a jealous altercation with his girlfriend has been ordered into batter's intervention program and told to get a substance abuse evaluation. Joseph Paul Elo, 53, of the village of Silver Lake, has been allowed to enter a pre-trial intervention contract which would enable him to avoid prosecution on charges of tampering with a witness and criminal mischief. A charge of aggravated assault has already been dropped as part of the deal with the prosecutor's office. A pretrial intervention contract orders ILO to complete a 29-week batterers intervention program, perform 24 hours of community service, obtain a substance abuse evaluation, and make restitution to his girlfriend in the amount of $840. And that's his update. Here's the update of a lady that was drunk and fell out of a golf cart. <laughs> 
A villager who fell from a golf cart at a country club will lose her driver's license. Jennifer Lynn Ducott, 55, of the village of Bonnybrook, was sentenced this past week in Sceptic County Court on a charge of driving under the influence. She will lose her driver's license for six months, has been placed on probation for one year, and has been ordered to perform 50 hours of community service. That's her update. And I think we got one final update. It's really more of a report, but I've talked about it before, so technically it would be an update. The Pickleball Club and Stevens Construction Company on Thursday celebrated the topping out of the building, which marks the halfway milestone in the construction of what will be Florida's largest indoor pickleball facility. The large metal structure is visible from County Road 466 near the Hampton Inn and across from Laurel Manor Recreation Center. The Pickleball Club facility will be a 40,000 square foot two-story fitness complex that will feature 16 indoor championship grade pickleball courts, cafe, pro shop, locker rooms, and lounge. The second floor mezzanine will house a bar, lounge, and provide a viewing area of the courts below. The second floor will also offer offices, conference rooms, and storage. Additionally, the pickleball club will include two outdoor pickleball courts and two bocce ball courts with canopy shades offering protection from the Florida elements. The construction began in November and is slated for completion in late 2024. They indicated that the facility would be the largest indoor pickleball complex that they have constructed in Florida. Jenkins told the audience that the pickleball club has several facilities under construction in Florida and has purchased land for an indoor complex in Ocala. And that would be the latest update for that. Two more golf courses and villages will be closing for rest and rehabilitation. Yes, this is nothing new. Uh, I'm sure they're going to close more down because our golf courses this year has turned into crap because of bad management. Uh, that'd be my guess. Everybody wants to blame it on the weather, but I'm not sure about any of that. But anyway, usually when about the time the snowbirds go home, and it's usually around May is when everybody goes home, and that's when they start shutting golf courses down and working on them through the summer to get them ready for the snowbirds to come back next year. Now, there's been a lot of debate about that, saying that they get everything ready for the snowbirds to come back, but the full-timers that are here, we're kind of getting screwed over because the golf courses are all closed and we're here full-time and we can't play. That's true and not true, but it is, it is debatable. The Truman Executive Golf Course and the Roosevelt Golf Course will be shutting down. The Village's Golf Management has taken a black eye this year as there has been an unprecedented wave of complaints about golf course conditions. Initially, golf course managers attempted to blame El Nino. In response to the outcry from residents, golf managers have proposed spending more than $11 million in amenity money, including $4.56 million for renovations of courses by the Amenity Authority Committee and another $7 million by the Project-Wide Advisory Committee. In a recent report card, Truman earned a C while Roosevelt earned a D. I'll try to bring up that report card so you golfers out there can see what it looks like and how they do it. Golfers have been especially vocal about the poor conditions of the Truman course. There are no greens left. Absolutely horrible conditions, said Don Whitney of the village of Collier. James Pendergast of the village of Mallory Square agreed with Whitney's harsh assessment of the Truman course. The greens are unplayable. At least one half dirt and some three quarters dirt. Horrible, Pendergast said. The Pelican, Bonita Pass, the Redfish Run Executive Courses are currently closed for rest and rehabilitation. Every year at this time, just to be fair, these executive golf courses are always overplayed in the wintertime because they're free, basically. So the ones that play them a lot, I'll say, are beginners, and beginners aren't necessarily up on golf course etiquette and rules and they do things that causes a lot of destruction like one is four players and they got to have four golf carts out there running around well that that makes it much tougher for the grass they get run over by all them golf carts it should be four players two carts only period another thing is i think the villages are going to have to start and so he's open up more golf courses. They're going to have to start cutting back on how many people can play in the wintertime per course. We only allow, I don't know, 1,000 people a day on these executive golf courses and cut them off. 
Uh, they're not going to like it, but it'll save the grass and it saves a lot of wear and tear. An unlicensed driver from Ecuador was arrested after he was caught speeding on County Road 466. Alan Tomas Tella Castillo, 31 of Usos, was driving a red sedan at about 5 a.m. when he was caught on radar traveling 78 miles per hour and a 45 miles per hour on Country Road 466 at Cherry Lake Road, according to the arrest report of Sumter County Sheriff's Office. During a traffic stop at County Road 466 and Buena Vista Boulevard, the deputy discovered Tello Castillo did not speak English. Well, I'm shocked. The deputy assessed a translation line through dispatch to communicate with Tello Castillo, who had an Ecuadorian identification card. He explained that he was in the process of obtaining a driver's license in the United States. Well, why don't you have one? Tello Castillo was arrested on a charge of operating a motor vehicle without a license. He was also issued a ticket for speeding. He was booked at the Sumter County Detention Center and released after posting a $150 bond. I would still like to know the new law that DeSantis passed about illegal immigrants with no driver's license in this country. If they come into this state, especially if they got like a California ID card, he mentioned that specifically, or a New York ID card, he mentioned that specifically. You come here, we're going to arrest you we're going to turn you over to border patrol what happened to that because if if they if that law is in effect i want to know why is it Sumter county in the courts here why ain't they enforcing that law a villager's oft arrested son has been snared in a multi-initiative aimed at making sure offenders are abiding by terms of their probation Brian Mark Krasuski, 49, was arrested at his home at 616 St. Andrews Boulevard on the historic side of the villages at an Operation 420, according to a news release from the Lady Lake Police Department. Krasuski was arrested for violation of probation after narcotics was located at the home. We were honored to join our partners with the Florida Department of Corrections on this important operation, said Lady Lake Police Chief Steve Hunt. These check-ins not only remind probationers to remain compliant, but let the public know that their state and local law enforcement agencies are putting boots to the ground to ensure their safety. He was initially booked Sunday at the Lake County Jail and then transferred to the Sumter County Detention Center, where he continues to be held without bond this week. In the past, Krasuski has lived with his mother at her longtime home in the village of Winifred and has a long history of arrest. Why do you parents keep doing this? Why do you keep letting your juvenile delinquents that's never had a job they're on drugs they're a bunch of thieves come to a retirement community like this and live you're gonna to have to explain that to me this has got to be one of the silliest one of the sillier things that i've read a man suspected of driving under the influence was arrested after straying near the helipad at uf health the village's hospital a security guard at the hospital contacted law enforcement shortly before 2 a.m friday to report a possible drunk pedestrian who was falling into a vehicle let me repeat that last statement who was falling into a vehicle <laughs> According to a rest report from the Sumter County Sheriff's Office, a deputy arrived on the scene and found 62-year-old Mark Allen Pryor of the Water Oak community in Lady Lake, who was standing by a gold Chevy S10 pickup. He had a strong odor of alcohol. The keys to the truck were in his pocket. Pryor agreed to participate in field sobriety exercises and pointed out he was wearing a knee brace. He struggled through the exercises and nearly fell to the ground. This isn't going well for me at all, Pryor said. <laughs> no, it isn't. He provided breath samples that registered 0 0.062 hmm, and 0 0.065. Well, that's not legally drunk. Because the readings were below the 0 0.80 legal limit, Pryor was asked to submit a urine sample. He refused. That sends up red flags, doesn't it? A criminal history check revealed Pryor had been convicted of DUI three times, twice in 1990 and in 2007. Due to the previous convictions, Pryor was arrested on a felony charge of DUI. He was also charged with misdemeanor county of refusal to submit to testing. He was booked at the Sumter County Detention Center on a $10,000 bond. <laughs> you're so drunk, you're driving around the helipad at the hospital. <laughs> Good Lord.
The homeowner of an unoccupied home in the villages is facing a $2,500 in fines due to its rundown condition. The home at 1220 Zapata Place in the village of Del Mar was up before a special magistrate Thursday morning at Lady Lake Town Hall. Fines of $100 a day have been occurring at the property which is owned by Shanita Brown and Cynthia Davis. There are windows missing at the home which is unoccupied. The grass appears to be getting mowed on a fairly regular basis, though it's not clear who is tending to the lawn. Certified letters have been sent, but have not been signed for by the owners. An intoxicated man was arrested in a domestic dispute at the home in 2023 after an altercation with his live-in lady friend. Well, you guys see pictures of that home. It says in a rundown condition. Well, other than a couple of broken windows, which who knows how that happened. Um, actually, the home doesn't look in that bad of shape in the picture. Now, see, this could be a deal for somebody. Somebody willing to has a little bit of money. Well, it doesn't have a lot of money. And they could buy a place like this, and they could just clean it up. The outside is vinyl, so all it would take is a $69 charge to have high-pressure house washing come in and clean the outside of it. It would look brand new. I swear to you, it would. Get your driveway clean. Call Romaldo. Have your driveway washed. I have mine done twice now. It, it keeps it in really good shape. I don't know what kind of chemicals they use, but I'm telling you, it does a remarkable job. Um, I'd get the driveway textured if it was me. That way it would hide every every blemish there. And then on the inside of the house, probably he's updated. You know, new cabinetry, new flooring, whatever you decide to put in it, maybe paint, that kind of thing. And the house could be a nice little home, especially for a part-timer. It could be a nice little home. So if, if we're not going to do anything here, I don't understand why would you keep paying five to $600 a month in fees to have this home and then just let it set like that. It doesn't make good common sense to me. Sell it. I don't know what it's worth. Quarter of a million probably-ish. Sell it and let somebody have it and have, and I'm done. <music> A village of St. Jane's woman has been arrested after allegedly attempting to steal plants and paper towels. Kashmira Engineer 56 went to the Lowe's Home Improvement Store at Trailwinds Village at about 10 a.m. Wednesday and headed for the garden section where she loaded multiple plants into her cart, according to the rest report of the Wildwood Police Department. She left the store and loaded the plants into the back of her Honda Pilots. Engineer returned to the store and loaded bounty paper towels, metal plant stands, pillows, and a ceramic pot into her cart. She went back to her vehicle and unloaded the items. The merchandise she took had a total value of $473.99, the report indicated. The incidents were captured on surveillance. An officer asked Engineer if she had paid for the merchandise. I thought I did, she said. She then complained she wasn't feeling good and she was going to pass out. EMS personnel were summoned to the scene. She was transported by ambulance to the UF Health, the village's hospital freestanding emergency room at Brownwood. After she was medically cleared, the engineer was arrested on a charge of theft and booked at the Sumter County Detention Center. She was released after posting a $500 bond. Here's a little news article that I'll be putting in for my Patreon members and maybe my YouTube members only. Hewa Club of the Villages played a unique role here for three decades. It brings the miracle of music to our lives. Maestro Bill Doherty is no stranger to the miraculous power of music. He will celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Opera Club Thursday at Laurel Manor. Next April, Doherty will be in Paris for another celebration, the reopening of France's famed Notre Dame Cathedral, which was damaged by fire in 2019. He will compose music with a Latin hymn called Stabat Matter. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Notre Dame is expected to officially reopen in December. It's very special, and I am honored to be part of it, Doherty said. He could have said the same for the Upper Club anniversary dinner Thursday evening. The music matched a celebratory mood of about 140 people in attendance. Doherty, who helped form the Opera Club, played piano and directed eight singers. It was a tribute to Doherty's talent and the hard work of Gary Piscatelli, president of the Opera Club. She and other members have raised nearly $650,000 in scholarships. Five recipients were awarded those scholarships on Thursday. I'm thrilled that we're here and still going strong after 30 years, Piscatelli said. This club started out to bring opera to the villages, and we're still doing it. The Opera Club has brought quality entertainment to the villages and helped so many young people pursue careers in music. I'm proud of them. 
I'm proud of the impact the Opera Club has made to our community. The young singers and some not so young who benefited from the Opera Club were on display at the event. Other performers include Carlo Custari and his daughter Mary Angle Custari, also Elise Curran and David Gehrig. Scotty Thomas weaves his way through their tables as he brought feeling and emotion to Over the Rainbow. I appreciate everything the Opera Club has done for me and to all the people it has helped in music, Thomas said. It's a great platform for us to learn and create. We can do it because the people in the club care. I love music, Emily Maddox said, adding many public schools have cut back on music. It's wonderful to be part of helping students with scholarships to keep their interest in music growing. Samuel Reynolds has been singing with the club for 27 years. He was in dynamic form Thursday with his bass baritone voice. He sang the medley from Paint Your Wagon and also a stirring version of The Impossible Dream. Bill Doherty has molded such young talent for 30 years. For him, this anniversary party was filled with music and memories. I was in tears for much of the show, he said. 30 years goes by so quickly, I can't believe it. And it really does. Then Maestro described what may be the credo for the opera club in the village is we have an eternity to sleep. While we're here, let's have fun, make great music, and make a difference if we can. A Chardonnay sipping villager blamed her erratic driving on a phone conversation with her sister. Brenda Gale Perdoe, 74, who lives in the Clayton Villas in the village of Iceland, was driving a white Honda CRV sport utility vehicle at about 11 p.m. Friday in the area of County Road 109 and U.S. Highway 441 when it was found parked on the right curb shoulder, according to the rescue report from the Sumter County Sheriff's Office. A deputy came up behind Perdoe's SUV and hit the siren to get her attention. Perdoe continued on U.S. Highway 441, but her erratic driving raised concerns that the South Carolina native was having a medical episode or driving impaired. During a traffic stop, Perdoe said she had been talking to her sister on the phone. Her eyes were bloodshot and her speech was extremely slurred. She said she had consumed two glasses of Chardonnay with her friends. There we are again with that number two. Have you had any beers? Yeah. How many beers you had? Two. I don't get that number. Where did the two come from? I'm, I'm just perplexed about that. Where did that number two come from? Drinking and driving and two. I don't get the relationship at all. She struggled through field sobriety exercises and provided breast samples that registered 0.181 and 0.169 blood alcohol content. An inventory of her vehicle turned up two bottles of Sutter Home Wine, Chardonnay, and Pinot Grigio. Both bottles were cold to the touch and unopened. She was arrested on a charge of driving under the influence. She was booked at the Sumter County Detention Center and released after posting a $750 bond. A realtor was arrested on a drunk driving. God, there's a lot of drunk drivers around the villages. A realtor was arrested on a drunk driving charge after hitting a parked car at Brownwood. Joanne Elizabeth Oswald, 55, of Lake Panasovsky, was unresponsive and unable to stand when she was found at the wheel of a Toyota pickup, which struck the rear end of a parked Jeep at about 11 p.m. Friday in the parking lot across from Cody's original roadhouse. The witness who initially found Oswald and dialed 911 told police that she seemed to be unaware that the crash has even occurred. The witness added that Oswald was unable to stand and laid on the ground in the parking lot. (laughs) Oswald, who operates Florida Realty Investments in Webster, agreed to participate in field sobriety exercises, but her poor performance led the officer to conclude she had been driving impaired. She provided breast samples that registered 0.148 and 0.153 blood alcohol content. Oswald was arrested and charged with driving under the influence. She was booked at the Sumter County Detention Center and released after posting a $500 bond. Here's another drunk driver. A Maryland drunk driver suspect lashed out at Sumter County Sheriff's deputy and called him a cracker when she was arrested in the villages. <laughs> By the way, in case you don't know, that's a black slang toward a white person. That would make her racist, right?
Keisha Denise Morse, 46, of Gwen Oak, Maryland, was driving a blue Nissan Altima at about 5.15 p.m. Saturday heading south of Morse Boulevard at County Road 466 when she ran a red light and nearly hit a Sumter County Sheriff's Deputy Squad car, which was northbound on Morse Boulevard and turning left onto County Road 466 with a green arrow. The deputy had to drastically apply her brakes to prevent colliding with Morse's vehicle. The deputy initiated a traffic stop immediately noticed that Morse had an obvious odor of an alcohol alcoholic beverage. The deputy spotted an orange Smirnoff peach lemonade drink in the center console and called in a second deputy to conduct a DUI investigation. Morris told the second deputy she only had one beer. One. Well, there's a different number. She struggled through field sobriety exercises and incorrectly recited the alphabet. A second unopened Smirnoff beverage was found in Morris's vehicle. She provided breast samples that registered 0.229 and 0.238. Well, that's pretty high for just one beer. During the trip to the Sumter County Detention Center, Morse became verbally aggressive and began making racial comments toward the arresting deputy. Uh, Morse called the deputy a cracker. <laughs> In addition to the charge of driving under the influence, Morse was ticketed on a charge of failure to stop at a study signal, open container, expired tag, no proof of insurance, and she was booked at the jail on a $1,000 bond. Good Lord, you shouldn't be driving at all. Forget the alcohol. Okay, here's going to be a quick little segment, kind of like my update segments. I have never done one of these, so I'm going to throw this in there. I just feel like sometimes I'm just talking about all the bad news here, and it's not all bad. There's, there's a lot of it that you don't hear because people don't want to tell you, but let me do a quick little segment of a few things going on around here. We remember it's an event in the villages that will pay tribute to the Holocaust survivors. Temple Shalom will host a tri-county Central Florida Holocaust Remembrance events called We Remember. It'll be 4 p.m. Monday, May 6th at St. Timothy's Catholic Church in the Villages. The entire community is invited to attend. This interface program with free admission doors will be open at 3.15 p.m. I hope you guys get this news before May 6th. No guarantee. The Rio Grande Recreation Center air gun facility will be closed for maintenance on Monday. If you have any questions or need additional information, contact the Chula Vista Recreation Center at 352-753-0002. Residents rid themselves of unwanted medicine at event in the villages. A steady stream of villagers arrived Saturday at Walmart at Buffalo Ridge Plaza in the villages to take part in Operation Medicine Cabinet. Deputies from Sumter County Sheriff's Office and members of the Community Action Partnership, otherwise known as CAP, greeted those dropping off unwanted medicines. Well, I wonder how many holes in ones of golf we got this week. Looks like one, two, three, four, five. Looks like five. Respectable. Don Lane of the village of Palo Alto got his hole in one on April 21 at hole number two at the Tarpon Boyle Executive Golf Course. It was his second lucky ace. It was witnessed by his neighbor, Christopher Cannon. Congratulations on your second hole-in-one, Don. Jose Velez Jr. of the village of Richmond got his hole-in-one on Wednesday, April 24th at the Richmond Pitch and Putt. Congratulations on your hole-in-one, Jose. Richard Franson got his first ever hole-in-one while golfing at the Palmetto Executive Golf Course. We were on hole number three, and he hit a nice drive and landed on the upper left part of the green, and we both watched it roll down to the right and drop perfectly into the hole with the flag still in it, said his wife Cheryl. Since it was 6.57 p.m., we were afraid it wouldn't count because there was no ambassador still driving around. So we quickly called the starter shack, and luckily, he was still there. He told us just to come back in the morning and fill out the paperwork. Well, congratulations on your first hole-in-one there, Richard. I know it's a thrill. Debbie Holt from Ohio got her first hole-in-one at hole number six at the Marsh View Pitch and Putt. She has only been golfing for two years. Well, congratulations on your first hole-in-one, Debbie. A villager golfing with the Bourbon Boys Golf Group. Love the name, Bourbon Boys. Nasha's first hole-in-one this week and was elated.
Ed Rockstro of the village of Winifred scored the lucky ace on Wednesday, April 24th at hole number six at the Kill Deer Course at Evans Prairie Championship Golf Course. It was a par three, 130 yard, and he used an eight iron. Congratulations on your first hole in one, Ed. You know what they say. Beer's on you. Let's read a couple letters to the editor real quick. To the editor, the developer should build a wall, like it has been done everywhere else in the villages. A wall will certainly improve the curb appeal and identify the villages. That's sent in by Gary Van Blarkham, the village of Della Vista North. Well, I'm not going to argue for the wall without the wall. Only two things I got to say is the developer is not liable to build anything in the older area. He's a developer. He come into an area, he takes a plot of land, he develops it, and he sells it. You people bought it. He takes his uh, warranties. They last for a year for one thing or maybe five years for another thing. Once the warranties on your property run out, he's done. He's done moved on to another area. Now, it's your property. And you've got deed restrictions that set in place in your district that you agreed to follow. So if you want a wall built, now the way I see it, you need to go to your district uh, meetings and talk to your district supervisors about getting the money appropriated to build the walls that you say is everywhere else. That leads me to thing number two, everywhere else. There ain't walls everywhere else. I don't even know what you're talking about. I live in Hillsboro. It's a great neighborhood. Pretty good size. We ain't got no walls, so I don't know what you mean when you say everywhere else. Not too far from my house is a Hillsborough Trail. That's the major, major road. There ain't no walls. Only walls that you'll see is around, I'll call them courtyard areas, the villa areas. They come with a wall around the villa area to separate it from, say, another neighborhood. But other than that, we don't have any walls. So when you say everywhere else, that's really kind of misleading for you to say that. But I get your point. I love dogs, but not those that are ill-mannered, poorly trained, and walked by people not paying attention to their dog. It becomes a safety hazard for everybody else and a financial liability for the dog owner when people overestimate their grip strength on the leash, stare down at their cell phones rather than their dog, all while refusing to give others the courtesy they deserve to safely avoid your dog. Control and train your dog. Put down your cell phone. Pay attention for the safety of all, your dog and mine as well as all of us that live here. That's sent in by Jane Stavish from the village of Bonita. Well, Jane, she's correct. I see it all the time myself. People walking around, they're not paying attention to their pet at all. This cell phone thing is like an addiction to people. Or they'll stop in the middle of a sidewalk. The dog leash is eight feet long. The dog's roaming around everywhere. And people have to either try to avoid your dog, step over the leash. And God help you if that dog causes some 80-year-old person to fall and break a hip. You're liable. So with that being said, some of these people walking dogs, let me just say one more thing. How do you know that person that's walking that dog is a village resident? I've mentioned it many times. This place is open to the public. I don't care what square you're in. I don't care where you're at. It's open to the public. That person walking that dog may not even live here. I think that's going to end this week's news. I'm glad you guys watched it. I'm glad you guys subscribe. Give us that thumbs up. Give us that like button. I think the like button and thumbs up is kind of the same thing. When I say thumbs up, I'm not talking about giving a thumbs up to somebody else's comment. That's not a thumbs up. The thumbs up is on this video. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that like button. That's what counts toward helping the channel out a lot. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you're not a Patreon member, become a Patreon member. Even on this news right here that you, that you just watched, there's going to be some things on this news that's going to be on Patreon and maybe my YouTube members that you're not going to see on YouTube. Join it. It's two bucks a month. It's not a big deal. It's two, five, 10, 15, and 25. I think the 25 membership might be sold out. I'm not 100% sure on that. So with that being said, I'm going to get out of here. I'm just going to simply say, be safe, stay well, See you on the other side, and don't leave that key in the golf cart.